What's up, guys? So we got a great big box, and inside of it is something awesome. And it's from one of our most favorite companies. What's up, guys? Tech Lab here. Now, it has been a while since we have taken a look at a new case, and it's really exciting that the first one that we get to look at this year is from one of our favorite companies, Sahara Gaming. Now, for those of you that don't know, Sahara Gaming are a reasonably small company, but they used to be massive in the case industry. For some reason, though, they did kind of fall off the radar a little bit, but they are coming back, and they are coming back in full force. Now, in the past, we have taken a look at some of their cases, in particular, the Sahara Gaming C501. Now, that case was so good in its build quality that we still use it today with our editing rig and the new one the p480 which is this one here is no different when it comes to that kind of quality as a small overview this is an atx dual chamber case that will cost you roughly about a hundred pounds and it is a brand new release they've only just had them in over the last week or so and we managed to get our hands on one we've actually been waiting for this case for months now and we've been on and off talking to them about different aspects of it now originally when they reached out to us and asked us if we'd be interested in taking a look we thought from the pictures it was just going to be a general dual chamber case and it's something that we don't tend to have on the channel but the more they sent us the more we realized this is not your average dual chamber case this case is absolutely packed full of features now the one they sent to us is the p480 in black and it has a glass panel on the front but they do do different varieties of these including a white one a black one you can have ones with a glass front or you can have one with a mesh front you do have to make sure that you're buying the right one though because they don't actually come with the different fronts so you can't interchange them but i am aware that maybe in the future they will actually supply the different fronts for you to purchase separately so if you do purchase one and you change your mind later you might not have to buy the whole case again that is a really cool feature from a manufacturer like this and something other manufacturers should actually try to do now let's take a little tour of this case on the front as you can see we have a bit of a split panel we've got a steel panel here and we've got a glass panel here this is the piece that actually gets changed really well you actually change both of them if you want to put the other front on and this side instead is actually a mesh when it comes to the io ports we have an on switch we have a reset switch we have a mixed microphone and headset jack we have two usb 3s and a usb c that is really awesome to see nowadays on these kind of cases because usually when you get to the more of the budget brands which the horror game in a kind of class does at the moment they tend to miss those kind of features out this and for so many other reasons i think they're making a comeback when it comes to the premium case on the exposed side of the case which we would tend to consider the uh, front nowadays because you look through it you do get a massive tempered glass panel now this runs up pretty much to about here all the way around and there is like a black bar that goes all the way through but you don't see the case behind they've actually gone edge to edge that is pretty cool and you may have noticed there's no thumb screws on the side and there's also no thumb screws at the back and we'll get on to why that is such a cool feature when we actually start to tear it down the back panel is a flushed piece of steel that matches the rest of the unit and it also doesn't have any kind of thumb screws because it is removed very similar to the other side it does have this mesh panel in the front here so when you're installing fans in the back of the inside you can actually exhaust or bring air in through the back. On the rear of the case, we will see a pretty standard setup. We have a placement here for a 140 or a 120 millimeter fan. We've got the place where our IO shield would go. Then we've got all the PCI brackets here for when obviously we're installing graphics cards, but there is another cool feature to this again, which we'll go through later. For the power, there is no power supply at the back of this unit. It actually installs into the front. What they've actually done is they've used an internal extension to a plug on the back so you can actually get ease of access. Taking a look at the bottom of the case, we can see that it actually has this great big anti-dust sheet and that is simply magneted on. You can just pull it off just like this and clean it up all you want. And then we can actually see the ventilation that's provided. On the bottom here, we actually have the place where the PSU would go. And again, we'll get into more of that once we tear it down. Then we have this great big piece here for fans. We can obviously run up to 140 millimeter fans at the back there. I believe that's two different fans, or you can run up to four 120 millimeter fans, which is where this case gets its name from because you can actually run up to a 480 millimeter radiator or four 120 mil fans in either the bottom or the top. That actually gives you the length of 480, ergo the name P480. Because the top is similar to the bottom where you can fit up to four 120mm fans, you do have this great big vented piece all the way down the top there, which is where the fans will either draw air in or they'll actually exhaust. Now this panel is removable, so let's jump into the teardown and show you how you get this thing apart. Now this case is not just unique in its actual design, it's unique in the way that you have to actually take it apart. To be able to strip this case down, you have to do it in a specific order, which for us became a little bit confusing to begin with because we weren't really sure how to do this and the instruction manual is on the inside. So make sure that you double check some videos beforehand so that you don't actually break anything. 
To strip this case down, first you will need to take the top off. Now the top simply comes off with this great big thumb screw on the back here. You just unscrew it and then you can slide the top back. Now the top will actually just lift straight off and you can see that underneath it is just this vented mesh stuff and it's got these little screw plugs here which actually slot into the top and they slide across to hold it in place with the back screw actually locking it down. Once the top has been removed, you can actually start to remove the other panels. To be able to remove the front and the back panel, all you need to do is now slide it up and actually ping it forward and drop it down. And as you can see on the glass, we do have some little pegs here which click down into the actual base. And then at the top here, we actually have these other little extra pegs, similar to what the top mounts down to, that slot into the little slots there. So that stops the glass from falling out. Oh, and the back panel too, because it's the same design. And the back panel is actually pretty cool. The back panel is actually tinted glass, so you're gonna get that tinted effect on it. It's not exactly the same as what's on their website where their website's kind of got clear glass through so that you can actually see what's inside the case. But this one actually comes with tinted and then it has this nice brushed steel plus some nice smooth foam pads all the way around the side. So there's no vibration on this panel. It's actually pretty solidly put together. With the side removed, we can actually get to the accessories and then we can find our instruction manual. The instruction manual is very basic. It basically just goes through how to tear this kind of case down, all the things you need to do to be able to install fans and swap different things around. So it's pretty cool that they've actually just included this as a piece of paper and not a great big manual, which is a bit of a waste of paper really. And it tells you everything that you need to know. In the accessory box, you can actually tell there's something a little bit more heavier in here than uh, what you normally get with a case. We do obviously get what we normally get with a case and that's a bag of screws and cable ties. Every case tends to give you them. But then you also get some extras of these. Now these are obviously for mounting SSDs and hard drives and you can mount them pretty much anywhere on the back plate. We'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But they do give you two extra spare ones. The case is mounted currently with three, so you'd get five altogether, which means you can install up to five hard drives. Now that we're inside the case, we can take a look at what we've got going on. Obviously here we can fit up to an ATX motherboard. So this will fit an ITX, a micro ATX or an ATX. I'm not 100% sure why you'd fit an ITX in this case, but some people like to do that. So you've got that option there. All of the actual places where the cables come through, which are two here for your power cables, one here for the actual cables to come from the PSU, have all these little rubber grom grommets in them so that you don't damage your cables. And they've got little flaps on them too to stop any dust from getting to the back, as well as looking prettier when the cables come through. And then when we come to the back, we need to remove the back panel and it removes exactly the same as the front panel. All you do is slide it up, drop it out. And as we turn it around, we can see that we've got the same little pegs on the bottom, which actually mount into the kind of feet pieces there. And we've got the same type of screw plug at the top, which kind of just drop into here. There's actually three on the back panel, and that's to stop any kind of wobble or vibration because this is actually much thinner than the tempered glass, but it fits perfect and it actually works really well. Now, as we can see inside the back plate, we can see that these little SSD hard drive caddies here, and they actually just undo with a bit of a thumb screw and we can lift them out. So they're the ones that you can actually get there. There's three mounted on the back at the moment, so you could mount any kind of uh, 2.5 SSD and they've also got the mountings for the 3.5 inch hard drive. You simply just take them out, screw the drive to it, and then they'll click back in and you can screw it back up. To feed cables through to the motherboard, we've got holes at the top here and here, which means we can actually draw some cables over and actually put them through. And we've also got holes at the bottom here and here, and the placement of them are actually really good. They're gonna line up pretty well with all the cables on there. There has been some actual serious thought put into this case, and you can find that as you go through it. You tend to find that things line up pretty well with the standard motherboards and all that kind of stuff, which is something that Sahara Gaming tend to get correct. Even on their C501 case, we found no issues building into it at all, and everything seemed to be in the exact place that you needed it. Now, pretty much 99% of this case is removable without any kind of tools, but there are some places where you do need something and that's basically just a basic screwdriver. For anyone building a PC, I would expect you to have a basic screwdriver right there. And this is one of the pieces that you will actually need to do it. This panel here is actually a bit of a strengthener panel that is more of a bit of a door. Now, if we take a screwdriver and we just undo the three screws at the side here, you will see that we actually have a bit of a door. Now, if we just kind of pry that door open a bit, it does swing on the two hinges. You can remove the hinges by simply unscrewing the two screws there and the hinges will actually slide off if you don't really want that panel in. I'm not 100% sure why you wouldn't want that panel in, but maybe if it gets in the way of some kind of cable management, you can actually take it out and that's pretty cool. 
The door itself as well, just another thought that they've given you. Here are two actual screws that go through the system and they are magnetic. So the door will actually magnetically shut and it actually can't jump forward again. So another cool feature from Sahara Gaming, they kind of think of all those little details that many manufacturers don't bother with. Once the door is open though, we can start seeing what we've actually got inside here. There is a bit of a cave in here where we can um, mount our power supply and it does mount up the front here. There's actually this separate little unit here that we can unscrew. And if we just take the two screws out of it there and there, this actual plate does slide forward and we can take it out. And then this is what our power supply would mount to. We would simply take this, mount the power supply to it, and then we can click it back in. It's got these little hooks on the back there, which will click onto some bubbles inside and then just slide straight back in. Now I'm not 100% sure on what size power supplies really go in here, but you do have up to like about here where the cables come out. So that's gonna be a pretty deep power supply. Where the cables go, they can obviously bundle inside of here, or when you've got the door kind of open like that, there is a gap around the back so you can bring them out into the rest of the case, tie them all off, and it would look pretty tidy. Now, we're not building in this case yet, but we are going to be doing it on a future video. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see that. And we'll go through some of those extra details on how we hid cables and where you can actually put them in that video. When it comes to the cables that are provided in here, we've obviously got everything from the front IO shield. We've got the USB 3, all the front panel connections, the HD audio. But then we've also got the extra extension for the power supply here. Now that runs from the back across the case here back through into the side here and into your power supply. Now you could reroute that cable. There's nothing stopping you from actually taking that cable out, rerouting it on the inside and coming down the back so you don't actually see it through the front. There are all the options that open to you to be able to do that. Now, obviously already we've run through a ton of features that this case offers. It's got everything that you need to be able to build the system into it, but we haven't finished yet. For the front panel, we mentioned before that you can either get a glass or a mesh panel. And the front panel is a little bit different to be able to take off. There is no sliding mechanism on this one. All you have to do is actually just pull the panels forward. So once you've got the top and all the sides off, you just want to pull on the panel and then it will actually come off. And you'll just see that there are these little balls on the back that just click into place onto them. Now for the glass panel, it actually comes in two pieces. We've got the steel piece that goes around the IO and then the glass panel. And you have to be careful when you pull this one because you don't want to drop it. Make sure you're doing it over a desk. It comes off pretty much the same. And then we've got the glass panel here, which is very similar construction to the side panel. It is tempered glass and it is a black tint. You've got the two metal strips up the side, which have got the little ball click things in, which obviously mount into here. There is a anti-vibration strip that runs up the side of each side there. So it kind of seals it off from any kind of dust getting in as well. And then you've got the little sponge pads at the top and bottom there which will stop any kind of vibration as well as any dust getting in as well. Now, as I said before, when you purchase these, you won't actually get two fronts for this. You'll only get one and it depends on which one you're buying. But I am aware that they may start supplying the actual fronts themselves. So you could always upgrade it later. If you do purchase the mesh one, you will get a front like this. So this is a mesh front panel that they actually sent us along as well. It's pretty much the same design as the rest of it, except it comes in one piece. And you have a full mesh panel here instead of where the glass was on the other one. You've still got the same IO shield and it actually plugs on exactly the same way. Using the little ball and clicks, simply just load it up into place, click it on all the way around and everything will pretty much fit. Now, the front that you will want for this case is all dependent on your requirements. Do you want airflow going through the case? Then obviously you want to go for the mesh panel. If you want to do it for more than looks and you're actually going to draw air in a different way, maybe you're going to draw it from the bottom up and out, you may not actually need the front mesh panel. So you could go for the glass one and it kind of looks pretty cool as well. Another cool feature of this case is actually comes down to where the PCI slots are. Now, obviously in standard format, you can mount a graphics card in as you would normally do in a kind of horizontal way more than anything, but they give you a little surprise here. Taking a screwdriver, you can simply remove the screws from around the panel itself, take the panel out, turn it to the side and remount it back into the case using the same screws. And what this will do is this will give you the ability to vertically mount your GPU without actually using anything else on the case or using any of those GPU mounts that kind of sit inside the case where it's awkward to get the cable in. They've actually provided this for you. So what else does this case have? And obviously from its name, the P480, which comes from the length of the case and the amount of fans you can fit in there, is obviously the cooling solution. When it comes to fans in this system, you can pretty much fit them anywhere. On the bottom here, we can obviously fit up to two 140 millimeter or four 
120mm. In the back here, we can fit either two 140mm fans or one hundred two 120 millimeter fans. And to be able to fit the 140mm, we'll need to remove the bracket in the front where we can actually install two 120mm fans if you're only running 120s in the back. So that is a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But that's obviously not all we can fit in there. In the rear here, we can fit either one 120 millimeter fan or one 140 millimeter fan. And on the top, we can actually fit up to four 140 millimeter fans or four 120 millimeter fans. Now this gives us a total case capacity of fans, and that's 120 millimeter fans of up to 13. So. If you are going to purchase a case like this, make sure you build into the budget for how many case fans you want to run because you can pretty much run quite a few. To remove the front panel just in the front here, there are two screws there and there and then it will simply come out. So there are three places on this case that you actually need tools. Everything else is toolless, which is pretty cool for new builders and particularly those that may not have masses of tools around to be able to do stuff. And because the case is basically just a very wide open frame, it means everything is gonna be installed pretty easily as well. Now, like I said before, we were super excited about getting this case and we wanna really wanna thank Sahara Gaming for sending it across. This is not the last time you're gonna see this one because we are gonna actually be using it for our benching rig. And for those of you that watch the channel regularly, you know that our benching rig kind of just sits in one of those real rubbish, cheap as chips mining rig. So it constantly gets covered in dust and it's not great for sitting on the side. So this is where that system's gonna go. And we've got something really special for that. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you wanna see what we do with that. Now this case is ram packed full of features as we've already shown you. And I'm sure we've probably missed some. When they do come to mind, we'll obviously drop it in the comments below or we'll start feeding some of those updates to the community tab on our channel. But let us know in the comments below, is this a case that you would consider? Is it something that you would put your system in. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this and to see where we take this next and we'll catch you in the next one.